Hi, welcome to episode one of Cracking the Codex for the Adeptus Custodes. This is the first look where we will take an in-depth overview of the four detachments that we have and the changes in the Codex. We're not going to be banging on about all of the things that Custodes have lost throughout the video, but they have got They've lost a lot, I think it's fair to say. So we are going to talk about that before we get into the uh, the meat of the video. How are you feeling about this one, John? I'm conflicted. So mm. as someone that played against a lot of Custodes, yep. I'm glad that the I fight first kind of approach of just like it being a little oppressive at times, if played mm. well, is gone. It's just that horrible challenge, like with Dark Angels, where you look at it going... What do I do now? My, my gimmick's gone. I actually have to find something else now. And that takes time, right? Well, they had layered durability and fight phase control. Mm. They lost both of those, and it doesn't really feel like they replaced it with anything. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's very... <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a little hard to be excited about Custodes, which is a shame, because I really enjoyed playing them. But... Uh, mm. There are there are some things in here that you can do with the codex, so we're gonna gonna go through those. Why not? Let's get started. So, first of all, martial katars. This has changed slightly. Um, before you would pick one of three bonuses for your entire army, they've removed one of the choices. They've removed the minus one to hit, and now it's only your melee weapons have sustained or lethal hits. But you can pick on a unit by unit basis in the uh, the fight phase. How are you feeling about this one? I like it. It's a bit yeah. more flexible, and I think having things that are not so tied to your entire army doing one thing, especially when you're an elite army, helps because we've sure. seen what happens with Space Marines. If you've got just your oath targets you can actually deal with, great, you're killing that one thing, but what about the flexibility outside of that? So having it where you can pick and choose, I think it's nice. Yeah, yeah. I personally didn't have an issue with it the way that it was. Um, I would have, I think, preferred to keep it the way it was, but I don't think it's necessarily a nerf. Just a side grade, really. Mm. Um, new units. This is the closest we've got to a new unit. It's the Shield Captain. There's the uh, Pyrithite Spear. This is a one-shot melter gun, effectively. Mm. I don't think you will use this uh, this upgrade. In melee, it's the same. You also get shields, you get plus one wound compared to the normal data sheet. However, you are not assault. And custodies are famously slow. So if you're not advancing up the board and you're a 12 inch range gun, I just don't see the use on a single shot weapon there. Obviously, there are the Forge World um, Pyrithite Spears as well. You could have this model leading them. I haven't seen them all edition. So that's sort of where I feel. On this model. Yeah. yeah. That's a nice new model. And you can use it yeah. to build other things, I'm sure. So not a problem there. First detachment, Talons of the Emperor. So the index detachment gave a four feel no pain against mortal wounds and dev wounds at all times. This one now you have to jump through hoops to get some bonuses. So first of all, your a, a than, a than, a, your sister's units uh <laughs> Gain Null Aegis. When an Adeptus Custodes unit is within six inches of this unit, um, they get a five up feel no pain against psychic attacks and mortal wounds. I No, it doesn't currently... Uh, so, th so this is just a five up against mortal wounds. It doesn't get the benefit of death wounds. Hopefully they FAQ that the way that they did with the the one in the index, but yeah. yeah. And then the second half is your... Custodes units buff the sisters' units within six inches of them, and they get plus one to hit, and that's not locked to the combat phase. Uh, you can get it in the shooting phase, but the best shooting unit that sisters have is flamers, so it's effectively a melee only yeah. boost. What do you think about this? It feels thematic. I'll give them that. They're very mm. much pushing the angle that you've got Valerian and Alea, sort of two sides of the same coin. Yeah that work in unison, kind of a tandem kind of thing. It just feels very clunky. Mm. Like six inches, everything being kind of within six inches means you've got potentially quite big footprints just to achieve this. Yeah. And for that to be your your kind of your detachment special rule is 
suggested around how you position models. It's a bit, bit, bit punishing, I'd say. I think it's going to be like to get a benefit feels rough, which is a shame. Yeah, I agree. I think the saving grace of this one is you're just going to park a rhino in the middle of the yeah. board with some uh, vigilators inside of it. That rhino is going to give the feel no pain to any custodies models holding the central point or playing around there. Yeah. So you'll get that fairly safely and regularly, I think. But uh, yeah, absolutely. It is jumping through hoops for a worse buff than you got before. Moving on to our top picks. What have we got on the enhancements there? All right. I'm very prepared for this, as you can see. <laughs> so let's get the first one up. So uh, this is, so we've gone with the Aegis project, Projector, which mm. is custodian model only. Um, so once per turn, the first time a saving throw has been failed, you can change the dam damage characteristic of the attack to zero. I think this is very valuable. We've lost a lot of tankiness in Custodies. Yeah. So being able to blank that one big hit is, is quite tasty. And then the second one we've gone with is Gift of Terran Artifice, which is a custodian model. Each time the bearer makes a melee attack, you add one to the wound roll, which is all right. Yeah, this is... Um, anyone who's been playing Custodies knows the strength of the offensive buff uh, enhancements on Blade Champions. They have the best selection of weapons. This is not quite as good as the plus two attacks, but going with, you know, there's a profile that's strength 6, AP 3, flat 3 damage with dev wounds. That's underwhelming into a lot of targets because you're wounding on 5s or 6s. Pushing that to 4 or 5s is quite nice and you're able to churn out that 3 damage. So it's a, it's quite a nice one to put on a Blade Champion. What have we got strategy-wise? So first one we've uh, kind of picked out is Hunter's 1, which is a strategic ploy for 1 CP. Start of your movement phase, uh, up to two custodial units from your army. Till the end of the turn, the units are able to shoot and declare a charge in a turn in which they fell back. Um, the one condition is one of those two units has to be an Anathema Psychana unit, and that are both within six inches of each other. So yeah, so tandem thing. Yeah, so pretty much all of the strats in this detachment have this limitation. So you get to use it for once, just on any unit, or if you've positioned correctly and you're using it on a Custodes unit and a Sisters unit, you can get the benefit on both of those units at the same time for a single CP. Where this doesn't work is if you're using the battle tactic cost reduction on a Shield Captain, because yeah. specifically it has to only target that model's unit. However, you can still use it just on that single yeah. model. Because it's up to, which is the important bit. Cool, and then next uh, we've got Taloned Pincer, which is a battle tactic for one CP. It's in your opponent's movement phase, just after they've done a normal advance or fallback move. Um, again, up to two units um, that are within nine inches of the enemy unit. Um, you can make a normal move up to six inches. And then the prerequisite is you're kind of being in engagement range. And you can only select two units if one of them is the Anathema and within six. So, Yeah, that's, so that's just the prerequisite for all of them there. Yeah. So it's just a nice reactive... Moving and it's moving flat six, which I think is really nice. It's moving flat six. It's potentially two units, and it's a battle tactic. There are four yeah. battle tactics in this detachment, so running at least one shield captain feels quite strong. Uh, I like it. I think being able to move two units reactively if you run yeah. shield captains is is pretty solid. And then our honourable mention is the Emperor's Executioners, which is a battle tactic for two CP. Mm. Uh, again, start of the fight phase, two units. Until the end of the phase, each time an enemy unit that is below static strength, uh, they target an enemy unit that is below static strength, uh, it's add one to the wound roll. Yeah, this is really solid. Something that is nice about the um, this, it's a battle tactic again. 2 CP feels a little steep for my blood. I don't love yeah. 2 CP for, like, plus one to wounds is a very strong ability, but I've probably got other things I want to spend my CP on. However, if you do find yourself in a position where you do have that captain, you do want to just slam it as your battle tactic for the turn, you're going to feel great about it, plus one to wound. Yeah. All right. And then the Talon's data sheets to watch. This one, uh, first of all, Wardens. Wardens are incredible. Custodies yeah. lost a lot of their laid defenses. Wardens are the one unit that stayed roughly as tanky as they were. Obviously, they lost the minus one damage and the, the interrupt. However, that four up feeling of pain is still very good. You've got to be more precise with your timing, 
but I think you're still wanting to put probably three units of wardens in all of your custodies lists. Uh, next up, Alea and Vigilators. So Alea is interesting. She's the sister's name character. She has a flat three damage weapon, and she gives the unit that she's in fights first. That's not bad. This is this is genuinely a model that I thought about using before the codex changes. Yeah, didn't because you have you used to have fight first in a stick. It's now the only source of fight first in the book, which means it hasn't got better, but the options around it have got less appealing. So I quite like it. Um, the list that we're talk, going to talk about later on, spoiler has a layer vigilators, uh, a squad of ten in the rhino, just going to park up in the midfield. Gives you that sort of offensive punch that coming out of a, a transport is, I think, quite a strong ability, especially if you've got, you know, ability to advance and charge. You don't hear, but you've, it gives you that little bit of extra reach, just being able to get out and touch something. And while they do fold like a paper towel, if your opponent has any shooting, if your opponent's playing a heavy melee army or you are tucked into the corner of a ruin or something like that, um, they're going to be quite difficult to deal with because they have a fair output with uh, fights first and lots of AP2, flat 2 damage. Next up, we've got the Blade Champion. Blade Champion's incredible. It's just a great unit. It's still great. It got worse. Still good. You're still advancing and charging. That's what you want. You want to get those Wardens up into the, your opponent as fast as possible. Uh, and then finally, Honourable Mansion Rhino. For the obvious reason, transporting Vigilators, but also giving out that uh, Anathema Sycana buff of uh, five up field of pain to your custodians within six inches of it without dying to incidental firepower. Next up, we've got the Shield Host. So, Shield Host, this is the offensive detachment. Yeah. Did you have you ever thought, man, I like custodians, but I don't do enough damage? Well, this is the one for you. Once per game, you get at the start of the battle round. So if you're going second, you've got to call your shot ahead of time. You get uh, crit hits on a five, which when stacked with the guitars is either lethals or, or sustained. You also improve the armor penetration of your attacks um, by one. So you're getting to that AP three in melee with your spears or AP two with the flat three damage axes, which is interesting. There's definitely some play to be had there. It is a one-term bonus though. That's something that you've got to watch out for. What do we got on the enhancements here? Right, so first one we've gone with is from the Hall of Armories, which is a shield captain only. Uh, add one to the strength and damage characteristic of the bearer's melee weapons. I like this. There is not that much that you can get. Not many sources of flat damage three in the book. There's Trajan, there's the axes, which are AP1. AP1 is not great, and you've lost your only way to ignore AP, you know, modify reduction like Armour of Contempt. So being able to put this on just a, you know, a spear, have a flat three damage spear on a shield captain who's got seven attack base. Solid. Mm. I really like it. And then the next one, Castellan's Mark, which is on a shield captain as well. Uh, after you both have deployed and determined who has the first turn, up to two Custodes units, excluding Anathema Sycana, uh, can be redeployed, and they can go into reserves irrelevant of what you've already got into strategic reserves. Yep, this is nice. nice. You're an elite army. Reactive moves in the deployment are good, potentially, because you, you move quite slowly as well, uh, or just pulling units into reserve. You, you know, if you're putting things on the front line, but you want your opponent to not rush you to deploy more defensively and then you pull back as well. That's something yeah. you can do there. And then for stratagems, uh, we've got the first one we've gone for is multi-potentiality. Try to say that three times. Yeah. Whew. And it is for CP, strategic ploy. In your movement phase, one custodial unit from your army that has fallen back this phase, it is eligible to shoot and charge in that turn. It's a good effect. They've printed it multiple times. I'm going to put it on the list multiple times. It's good. Yeah. Does the job. Yeah. Um, and the next one, Vigilance Eternal. Another strat ploy for one CP. It's your movement phase, one Custobie's battle line from your army, excluding the Anathema, as we expect. Within range of an objective marker you control, um, it basically stickies that objective marker for you. Really yeah. handy when you're an elite army, right? Yeah, and with it being battle line only, this does mean that it's only Custodian Guard. Guard are pretty good. 
Kyria Drax has got a points nerf, so whether or not you're going to see her is, you know, maybe a question to be asked. But it does mean that if you're playing into a meta where the right is a lot of indirect, it's nice to have in your back pocket. Or uh, if if your opponent's bringing in units from reserve and shooting off points, you can still stick at that one and hold it. And then finally, with the honourable mention, we've got Architect Munitions. So, hmm. Senior Shooting Phase, one Custodes, not Anathema unit, can select either lethal hits or sustained hits until the end of the phase. Their ranged weapons have that effect. It's nice. Yeah, so it uh, so just to double check the wording there, it says the unit, it doesn't say models, right? Until the end of the phase, ranged weapons equipped by the models in your unit. Yeah, so I think that would apply to Draxus. Um, I'd have to double check that one, but if you're able to give her... Yes, because if she's joined a unit, yeah, that would be applicable. So characters yeah. would benefit, yeah. Probably something to be had there. You might be looking at running a squad of guards so you can <laughs> stick your objectives anyway. She's good, giving her sustained hits on the things that don't have sustained hits, or lethal hits potentially. Not going to complain about that one. Pretty cool. All right, so what are the top data sheets to watch? Wardens. Wardens are really good. And I'm going to say it again. Wardens are really good. They've got a four at feel of pain and minus one to be wounded if they're led by a character. You're going to be running them. You're probably going to run 15 of them. God, they're yep. good. Great models. <laughs> uh, Blade Champion. You want to get those Wardens up the board? This is also a detachment that you can put buffs onto uh, Wardens. Um, sorry, uh, buffs onto to Blade Champions. Just a great data sheet. Really solid. Flexible weapon as well. You know, it's just great. I've got loads of good things to say about shield champions. Uh, then there's also the shield captain in Alaris Terminator armor. So this one, uh, in fact, I'll come back to that. The last one I've got here is the Sagittarius Guard. So there is an enhancement that you can take that ignores cover. Yeah. And if a character can join Custodian Guard, they can join the Sagittarius Guard. So there is a world where you could run some of these and um, potentially, you know, give yourself lethal hits in the shooting phase as well or or something like that, and you've got a shooting unit. I don't think it's the play, but I think it's interesting enough to mention it and maybe yeah. there's something that can be done there. Um, there was also a reason that I said the... Uh, the Alaris Terminator armor, Captain. I think it's just it's just an efficient data sheet, to be honest. Mm. I don't think there was anything more deep than that. Um, you you might want to put the uh, the five point enhancement that ignores cover on that model as well, mm. putting it with the Alaris Terminators. They've got the most output. They've got a lot of AP one shooting with the grenades. Yeah, it's not an upsetting thing to put on that. <laughs> Null Maiden Vigil. So. Before we get into this one, this is a pure sister's detachment. This is a very expensive army to put together, and I don't know if anyone was asking for it. It's like the Krut detachment, but they didn't give more data sheets. I don't really understand why this detachment exists, personally. I wouldn't mind it existing if they had six detachments, but yeah. I don't love that there is... There's two detachments that you have to run sisters in if you want to play custodies correctly out of the four. Mm. Two of them you can run just custodies models and not have to worry about your sisters units, but two of them you need to be running sisters, which I don't love as a um, a general design that they've gone for with this codex. However, what do you get? In the battle truck step of your opponent's command phase, if an enemy unit is either a psyker or below starting strength within 12 of a sister's unit, um, they must take a battle shot test. If the blow half strength, it's minus one as well. So this is basically the Chaos Knights army rule, but yeah. it also affects psychers instead of just below starting strength. My experience playing this is that as the Chaos Knights player, or in this case, the sister's player, it feels pretty underwhelming. As the person playing against it, you're constantly a little concerned about it, and it'll occasionally yeah. ruin your plans. It's, you know, it's something. Uh, also, prosecutors, which are the sisters with bolt guns, become battle line in this detachment, which I believe they were before the Codex, yeah. So all they've done is taken it away to give it back in a cack-handed way. Yeah. Is there anything worth talking about in this detachment, John? 
uh, I think there's some there's some spicy things. Um, yeah. They're at least cool. So like Huntress Eye. So it's a Psychana model only. In your command phase, select one enemy unit within 12 of the bearer. They have to take a battle shock test. So you get to force five battle shock tests potentially in a game. Cool. It's cute. I don't know if I would put it in automatically in any list I built, but I think if you're running the sisters detachment, you put this in. Yeah. Because you're forcing battle shock tests already. Like this is the sort of like Lictor equivalent. Your or yeah. new Lictor equivalent. You're you're saying to your opponent, my whole thing is I'm gonna try and disrupt your scoring more than kill you. Yeah. Um next uh, enhancement, the Oblivion Knight. It is Psychana model only. Whilst they're leading a unit, each time the model in that unit makes an attack, add one to the hit roll. If it's targeting a Psyche unit, add mm. one to the wound roll as well. Yeah, I think this is meta de dependent. The reason that I went with this over the... There's one that gives you plus one strength AP and damage, I think, or strength attack and damage, which is, you know, solid for the character. But yeah. I think Thousand Suns are looking like they're going to be quite good. Grey Knights yeah. look like they're still going to be quite good. So this could be a, a meta... A meta choice where you're potentially yeah. getting plus one to wound into, you know, some of the good armies. Right, on to some stratagems. Uh, the first one we've gone with is Anathema Blade Mastery. So in the fight phase, one Vigilators unit in your army that has not been selected to fight yet. Uh, they, when Until the end of the phase, until they make a, an attack, they can re-roll the hit roll. And if the target of the attack was battle shocked or is a Psyker, you can re-roll the wound roll as well. Yeah, I don't hate this. Because you're trying to force out Battleshock tests, getting conditional wound rerolls is quite nice. Yeah. Rerolling hits is just okay to start with. It's not awful. So paying one CP, I'm probably not gonna want to spend one CP for just hit rerolls, but if I'm getting the wound rerolls as well, I'm I'm slamming that and being pretty yeah. happy about it. And then purgation sweep. Mm. Um, this is a battle tactic for one CP as well. Uh, this is shooting phase. One witch seeker unit from your army that's not been selected to shoot. Um, until the end of the phase, add one to the attack characteristic of torrent weapons equipped by the unit. Um, if such a weapon targets a psyker or a battle shocked unit, add two to the attacks instead. Yeah, so you're just getting more attacks than your flamers. Yeah. The flamers are fine. I nice. like that it's not just psychers, they've added a condition so you'll be able to use it in all of your games. Yeah. Uh, I think the plus two shots is going to come up fairly infrequently. It's just, do I want to spend one CP for plus ten shots on my match, max Brick of Flamers? I think that's the basic yeah. question Makes to ask sense. yourself. And then the honourable mention is Desperation's Price, which is a one CP uh, strategic ploy. At the end of any phase, just after an enemy psychic unit has finished using a psychic ability, that targets a unit or finish making a psychic attack. Um, you target one unit from your army within 18 of that psyker. Uh, the enemy psyker must may then take a leadership test. If the test is passed, then the psyker is battle shocked. If the test is failed, then the psyker suffers three mortal wounds and is battle shocked. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It's a uh, it's a very different strat so what i like this is super conditional it's only when psychers do psychic things so nine times out of ten you might not see it at all but if you're playing against an army that doesn't have psychers mm. at rate you battle shock them not they take a test you battle shock them. you also might do three mortal wounds to them and make them think twice about doing psychic attacks i think it's interesting i think it's one of those things that if you've got it in your arsenal Yes, it doesn't happen like nine out of ten times, but that yeah. ten at, that tenth time, that's a story you remember when you're talking about games where a fun interaction happens, and it's it's nice. But I wouldn't, I don't think I would hedge my entire game plan around it. But it's just, it's nice to have, right? I liked it more when ninth, it was ninth edition, and we had forty strats per army. Then I didn't mind one of them being this, but uh, yeah, when it's one of your six, true. it's yeah. Uh, top picks. Wardens. I don't care that they're not sisters you, models. The thing is, you can still take them. You're you going to have to. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how many points you can spend on sisters? I don't think it makes 2,000 points. So you're going to be running wardens because <laughs> they're oh, really good. Six units of prosecutors. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, next up, Alea. Alea is genuinely good. Um, put it with some prosecutors. Uh, not prosecutors, sorry. Vigilators. Put them in a rhino. Yeah. 
that's like a, an actual melee threat unit. Yeah. Made out of, uh, you know, tissue paper, but hits very hard, has yeah. flights first. Witch Seekers, um, I think Witch Seekers are good. They have the scout move, they have the flamers, they've got the strat to get slightly more shots. That's fine. Uh, we might be seeing high volume of bodies in our future with the orcs being the yeah. other codex. Unfortunately, you'll be wounding on them on fives, but maybe you'll bring enough holy promethium to uh, to deal with them. And then again, honorable mention rhino. Uh, rhinos are just good, so yeah. being positioned to want to take them is makes them a fairly solid unit to have here. Finally, we've got the auric champions. So the whole conceit of this detachment is that the characters are so cool and so awesome, even compared to other custodies, they get a special buff. And they get, in your command phase, select one unit from your opponent's army and your character models, not units, your character models, get plus one to wound against that unit. Now, I don't know about you, but when I like plus one to wound... I really like it on volume of attacks. How much volume can a single infantry model uh, bring, do you think? Spoiler, it's not very much. Less than 10 attacks? The best you can do is the Hurricanus from the Blade Champion, which is, I think, 9 yeah. at rate, <laughs> something like that. It has sustained its natively. Yeah. You know what's really funny? Mm. The... Um, not that and you know you're necessarily going to want to run it, but the jet bike champion, the jet bike shield captain, he's got lance, so he gets plus one to wound anyway, so he gets no benefit from the army roll. But um, maybe maybe the strats and enhancements will sell us yeah, on this. It means you've got two lots of plus one to wound in your army. So that's oh, great! Treat that so on those four models I've brought that get the benefit. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, you've got to take your wins when you can. Yeah. <laughs> Right, let's let's have a look at what they can do. These these brilliant champions clad in Oromite. Um So we've got the Veiled Blade Enhancement. So this mm -hmm. is a custodial model only. Uh, add two to the attacks characteristic of the bearer's melee weapons. Once per battle, at the start of the any command phase, trap, tri trapple? triple the bearer's OC characteristic until the end of the turn. You know what you love it. It was in the index. It was good there. It's good here. Nice. It feels like one that can really be impactful in those kind of like embers of a game, like at the end. Oh yeah, yeah. Just no, it's it's, it's lovely, isn't it? It's an incredible enhancement, and I found that it was you know it had an impact every game I played with it. And the next one we've gone for is Martial Philosopher. So this is a custodian model as well. Bearer's unit is eligible to shoot back, uh, shoot and declare a charge in a turn of which it fell back, and then once per battle, when an enemy unit finishes a normal advance or fallback move within nine. If the bearer's unit's not within engagement range, it can make a normal move up to six inches. Spoiler, this is the other one that was... Uh, well, th th there's multiple. But this is the other good one that was in the index that they've put through here. It's great. It's really good. Yeah. Normal move once per game. It's hard for your opponent to play around. Yeah. And um, being able to fall back, shoot and charge is just very, very strong, genuinely, where you can get it. And then for some stratagems, shoulder the mantle. Mm. Um this is an epic D traction for one CP. End of your movement phase. One Adeptus Custodius character model from your army that is within two inches horizontally, five vertical of a friendly unit that it could lead. Very, very, very specific. Uh, the character model attaches to that unit mm. to form an attached unit. It changes the starting strength accordingly. Um, your character model cannot attach to a unit that is or already has an attached. Uh, cannot attach to a unit that is already an attached unit. So you just can't just stack your characters like some sort of like um, babushka doll type of thing. Like, oh, a character in this unit coming out of that. Yeah. So the the use here is once per game, the Terminator captains can reduce all incoming damage to one. Yeah. So that's that's not a that's once like they pick the phase and then they go for this phase. Any incoming damage it just gets reduced down to one. So yes. you can run genuinely quite tanky captains on foot on their own. And what you do is you advance them up the board turn one. And then turn two, you walk them forwards, you deep strike in a unit of Terminators, and you use the captain to close the gap. And instead of having a nine-inch charge from deep strike, you have a six-inch charge from deep strike because of the two-inch coherency and also 
the uh, the forty millimeter base size there. So you nice. might even get a little bit closer than that. Tricks it. Uh, it's cute. Yeah. It's it's definitely cute. I don't know if it's good, but I'm interested to see people doing it. Um, of course, it just runs the inherent risk that your opponent just runs you over with enough damage or you fail enough saves and you go, oh, hold on. My my sweet trick didn't work because the unit that I thought would live didn't. <laughs> Even reducing all the incoming damage to one, a Terminator character does not survive the full weight of a shooting army. Yes. Moving yeah. on. The next one, another epic deed stratagem, because obviously they're all epic because it's characters, mm. is the Emperor's Auspice. Uh, this is uh, your opponent's shooting phase or fight phase just after they've selected their targets. One custodies character unit from your army that was selected as the target of the attacks gains uh, the character models in that unit gain a four up fill no pain. Yeah, so you're paying for what you used to get, but you know. Oh, sorry, no, yeah. this isn't against mortal wounds. This is just a four up fill no pain. Yeah, yeah, this is fine. You you should potentially combo this with the the lone character that's going to run up the board and try yeah. and survive everything. Uh, but it's also genuinely good. There is a world where you play actual hero hammer with this detachment and you just run as many individual characters as possible and then units that don't care about having characters attached talking about you caladius grav tanks because they're just they don't need army rules to be good they're just a very efficient shooting platform yep. so that's something um and then the honorable mention is earning of a name which is mm. another epic deed fight phase two custodial characters that have been selected to fight they've not been selected to fight this phase till the end of the phase each time a character model in either of your units makes an attack that targets a monster or vehicle unit can reroll the hit roll and can reroll the wound roll so two guys playing whack-a-mole on some big targets cool yeah yeah no reroll hits and wounds is very strong yeah it is only on characters which is the downside to it but it's a CP. You're going to need to spend them on something, and you're probably trying to make characters work if you're playing this detachment. So that seems like a, yeah. an interesting way to do it. Rerunning hits is good. Uh, like, yes, you hit in twos, but you can also fish for sustained lethals with your martial katars. Um, and then if you're running, for example, blade champions with additional attacks through the relic, yeah. uh, the enhancement, sorry, you could be fishing for the dev wounds. Yeah. There's the play there. Yeah. Cool. So that brings us to. Almost the end. I got <laughs> so excited, I forgot where I was. Yeah. Um, data sheets. <laughs> Wardens, they're just good. Yeah. Uh, Blade Champion, just good. Uh, especially here, it's got the best weapons to buff. Yeah. That strength 6, AP3, flat 3 damage profile is really nice. Getting the additional two attacks on it is just peachy keen. Um, shield Captains in the Terminator armor, Mostly for the gimmick, but also I, I actually just think Alaris Terminators are really good, and I think this is a detachment that you might be more incentivized to run less foot sloggy stuff and more trying to teleport around the board, and because you you don't have defensive buffs, so you're trying to to play a more tricksy game. Yeah, uh, and then again, honorable mention the Terminators. Terminators are good. You're running them anyway for, for their uppy downy scoring ability. Here you might run them in bigger squads as well. So we've got a list here. I think a better list is to just go minimal stuff, grav tanks, and then maybe even ally in Canis Rex. That's not really a custodies list. No. So this is what we came up with in terms of playing like an actual, what you'd expect when you see a custodies list in, in yes. 9th and 10th edition. Uh, so starting off, we've got Alea. She's joining the 10 Vigilators. They are going in the Rhino. Then we've got two Blade Champions and a Shield Captain. Each of these is leading a squad of Wardens. Um, one's got the Radiant Mantle, which is minus one to be hit if you are within 12 inches of them. Not as good as it used to be, but I believe it used to be for... Yeah, obviously it used to be for individual models only because characters didn't yeah. join units. Now it's only if you're within 12, but that is your you know comfort zone. You want to be running at your opponent as fast as possible, so that's fine. Um, we've got the Age of Protector for blanking a single save, and then Gift of Terran Artifice as well for the other one, um, because you, just, you, you want to be as efficient as possible with all of these character units. Yeah. Um, the, the aforementioned three units of five Wardens, they've got the Vexillas, so they're all OC3, really nice. 
um, if you're tripling your OC. Oh, sorry, that's a different attachment. Just really nice in general. You know, you've got a beefy unit that can stand on a, an objective. Uh, two units of Alaris Custodians. Great. Small bases. Good scoring. Reasonable amount of output. Still have rerolls into characters, so you can do a surprising amount of damage into um, units your opponent thinks might win a fight there. Also have a once per game go up and come back down. Yeah. And because this list we haven't said is in the combined arms detachment, which is yeah. the talons of the emperor. Correct. The this is one where we've played around with th uh, three units of four witch seekers and a unit of four prosecutors. That's not just to be cute. They are also cheap scoring units. And you're less like now that you don't have the same defensive tools and fight phase control tools. Outside of running Bricks of Wardens, I'm less excited about running actual Foot Custodies models. So I had quite a few points freed up in the list to just run small MSU scoring yeah. units, trying to get into you know onto objectives, scout forwards. You could potentially move block. You can do a lot of things with little units there, and they do buff your units with the uh, the feel no pain as needed. Finally, there's four prosecutors doing the same thing, or home, home field holding for forty points, and a Calidus Assassin did take a points nerf. Don't care. It still does the same thing as it was doing. Perfect. This unit, this list had, you know, 10 points to spare anyway when we were writing it. So we swapped some things around and put that in. What are your thoughts on this one? So for me, this feels like um, a lot of the time with index custodies, they were very mm. good at the primary, but there was times where secondary could kind of be a challenge if you hadn't thrown in enough sisters to kind of give them that kind it's of true. secondary fle flexibility. This feels like a list that wants to play tactical to some extent because mm. you've got the flexibility, your Calidus, the Terminators, the Rhino, because you're going to have units spare because that Rhino is going to sit on an objective just being a pain for you, which is great. Um, and there's bodies. Like, I'm not used to seeing a custody list that has more than sort of 40 models. Yeah. So seeing a nice pile of stuff. I think the only shame is that it, there wasn't a way of justifiably putting in the no named character from the Sisters of Silence, but I just I think that data sheet just doesn't quite sing enough to kind of make me go, ooh. Yeah, you, you could have done, but there wasn't really a second unit that we wanted to buff, no. and the um the LA is just so yeah, efficient. Feel better. Yeah, <laughs> it, it doesn't feel worthwhile. If you wanted to run a second squad of um yeah. Sword Sisters, you you could do that. Although I, I don't necessarily think that I would be. I'd like the a similar sort of list with two rhinos just purely because I like having rhinos being a thing that they don't prioritize but helps you score your primary as well. I yeah. know that essentially your wardens will be doing that, but having them pushing off of objectives is actually more terrifying to me because they're, they're nasty bastards. <laughs> they are indeed. All right. Thank you very much for watching. This has been the first look at the Adeptus Custodes Codex. If you've enjoyed it, please do subscribe. We do drop one of these videos every week. We'll be probably back to looking at one of the Orc Detachments next week. But let us know in the comments if there's anything you specifically want to see. Um, please leave a comment in general. really helps the channel. And do like the video as well. Thank you.